The elements are formed in nucleosynthesis. Now the elements are a collective term, as each element consists of many isotopes. If you want to understand nucleosynthesis and how the isotopes formed, we need to look inside the isotopes and at their very cores, which uh, are built up by protons and neutrons. So let's assume there's a proton and one neutron, and these two are binded together. Now first of all, each of these, whether it's a proton or a neutron, these are called the nucleons. So in this case, there are two nucleons, which is a proton and a neutron. Then I would like to separate these two, or maybe just, if there are more, just take away one from all the other nucleons, one nucleon from the others. Then I need some energy to do this, just similar to when I would like to separate two magnets or I have um, a bunch of magnets and want to take one out of there. It takes a certain amount of energy. And so uh, this is what is called the binding energy. Um, although this sounds more like this is the energy to put them together, it actually is the energy that is required to take one out. So it's ba basically meaning um, um, loosening the binding energy or something like this. But as I said, it's called binding energy. And um, this will be on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, there are the isotopes. So for example, there's hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and maybe helium 3, helium 4, and so on. So this would be hydrogen with one proton, one proton, one neutron, two protons, one neutron, and so on. Now, if I plot here the binding energies, it looks something like this. So it's increasing with, um, with uh, more nucleons in the core of an isotope. And the binding energy on the y-axis is not a binding energy of the entire core, but it's usually the binding energy of a single nucleon. So this is the energy it takes to get one nucleon out of the core. So then, if for example I look at these two, and this one here has four, and then the unit here is mega electron volts, this has four mega electron volts, and this one here has two mega electron volts, then there's some energy release from here to here. And the energy release here is two mega electron volts. And this could be envisioned something like assume you start with two. Um, just two, something like two marbles or whatever. And these mar two marbles are in a hole that is two meters deep. And then there's some potential energy of these two marbles. And then I add a third marble. And then all three of the marbles are not two meters deep, but four meters deep. So for each single marble, then it takes, I need to, to pull them up four meters just instead of two meters, which means that just by putting one marble to the other marbles, all the marbles lose potential energy. And this potential energy is then freed. And this is exactly this here. These are these two mega electron volts per nucleon. So it doesn't affect just the one nucleon that I add, but all of them. And if I add a fourth marble, they fall from four to six meters deep. So releasing more potential energy because it takes more energy to get them out of the hole. And this is what this plot here means. However, uh, because this is per nucleon, the entire energy of the entire uh, core of one isotope is also constantly increasing, because in this case I would need to make um, four mega electron per one nucleon, so this times three nucleons, this would be then 12, for example. Um, this would be 12. All right, so let's look at the corresponding plot here. This looks, it's exactly the same plot I just showed you. On the x-axis, there is the mass number, so the number per nucleons, and on the y-axis is the binding energy per nucleon in mega electron volts. And then there is an inset that shows the uh, total energy of the core, and as just said, this is always increasing here. I'll come back to this inset plot here uh, just in a minute. So again, 
has just shown for the light elements there's an increase in binding energy. So the more marbles I add, uh, the deeper they fall in the hole. Which means that by making the light elements from, from even lighter elements, so making these elements here from these elements, this is uh, fusing isotopes together. And this fusion releases lots of energies, as you can see here. These are massive amounts of energies here. And this is the energy freed, for example, in stars or in um, hydrogen bombs. And this freeing of energy is, uh, works up to around iron. So the, most, the, the isotope with the highest binding energy is 62 nickel, which is right beside iron. And this is usually why I said up to iron it's possible to make um, isotopes from fusion because this releases energy. So this is a, a favorable state because if putting two isotopes together and they have then a binding, higher binding energy, so deeper in the hole, um, then it's possible to make them by fusion. And this is what happens a lot in stars. And then there's the, the other side. And here the binding energy decreases. So if I said before in this direction there's freeing energy, it means that in this direction it requires energy to make these isotopes. And this is usually what happens, for example, in supernovas. Because in supernovas there's a lot of high energy neutrons which have a lot of energy, and if they collide with isotopes, um, they can thereby produce isotopes of a higher mass because they also bring energy to um, put into the nuclei that is required, as said, because the binding energy is lower, we need to put in, so we, we take marbles a little bit out of the hole. Um, and this is why we need the extra energy from these very high speed neutrons here. And the, high, the, the isotope stable isotope with the highest, um, the, the last stable isotope is Wismut 209. Now this also means that going into this direction frees energy because this is again this direction here, this frees energy. And this is what's happening in radioactive decay. So there's uranium somewhere over here decaying to lead, which means into this direction this is freeing energy and this is why we can get energy from radioactive decay. However, although the energy per nucleon decreases in this direction, the total energy in these nucleons still increase because this is the binding energy per nucleon. So if I um, times this energy times 160 and this times 170, this will still be an increase in the total energy of the, of the entire core. Now finally, there's something that's called uh, the iron peak elements. And these are roughly these elements here. So of course, iron, chromium, vanadium, titanium, manganese, nickel, cobalt, zinc, copper. Around these are the iron peak elements. And they are sometimes referred to, to as the iron peak elements. And the reason they are referred to as this is that um, iron has a peak, well, nickel, in fact, has a peak in the binding energy. This is why they are called um, iron peak elements. So this is uh, what binding energy means and why it's important to understand nucleosynthesis.